Welcome to Live Action Star Wars. I'm James. I'm Ralph. And today we are talking about a disturbance in the Force. Uh, the yeah, relatively but... new documentary about the Star Wars Holiday Special. I think it came out last week. Oh wow! Did we like, did we just grab it straight away as soon as it came out? Yeah, yeah, That's pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. I knew. And I'm was, hoping people I knew it was coming soon. But yeah, yeah, it's good that we're on it. Yeah, um, we're going to be joined by the director, editor, producer of yes. the documentary uh, in a little bit. Mm -hmm. But until then, we can kind of talk about it ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure thoughts. that like when once Jeremy joins us, uh, it'll be sort of more of him chatting about the film and the process. Whereas now we can just sort of talk yeah. about the what we thought of it, what what we liked, what we didn't like. Um, it is new, so if you haven't seen it yet, it's a documentary, so we're not going to spoil anything. And it's the holiday yeah, special, so spoiling. don't worry about any spoilers or anything like that. Um, if you haven't checked out our episode where we covered the holiday special. Go back and do that. I'm sure that Ralph's probably already done it, but there'll be a link like on this somewhere to that episode. Yeah, I'll put it somewhere. And it's yeah. not even us covering it. No, we it's watched the whole and, thing. Like me and you Jay watch watching with the us. whole thing. Yeah. Um, and what's funny is, and I know this is live action Star Wars, and we don't really cover animation that much, but the animation sequence got taken out yep. of the stream because of it wasn't uh, part of our mandate. Right. Disney, well, no, but it, we it's it still exists. Yeah, it still exists. So I'm wondering if I can get that somewhere, or maybe like put the audio yeah. of that section out or something. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe something. We can do it. We can we can put out the audio as put a out the audio, and then you can like watch along because it that bit is on Disney Plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so audio yeah, maybe I'll do that. Maybe, uh, oh. maybe let's say on uh, Monday the twenty fifth, that'd be yeah. a nice present. You open up, nice little we'll Monday present. It. Everyone needs a little Monday pick me up. Right, right, right. And we'll do a um, uh, yeah. It'll yeah. be called a commentary. There we go. Yeah, our first commentary. I think. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should do more. They're fun. Uh, what did you think of the documentary, Ralph? I really enjoyed it. Me too. It I was, really enjoyed it. Was it. A really good time. Uh, I watched one... this. I watched this last night with Liz. Watched the first half of it. She didn't watch all of it. Um, she watched the first half. She's never seen the holiday special. She's seen right. some pictures of it. She'd seen like she knows what it is, but she's never seen it. She's not got any interest in never seeing it. To be fair, but right. didn't know quite how insane it is. Uh, so we're watching she, it, and she was, I think she she ducked out when they're talking about um, Itchy and the, the VR headset scene, because she was just right. horrified by it, right. <laughs> in a fun way. Did she, but she has no interest in seeing it after watching the doc? Like, just to uh, see no, for herself no. what it's if, like. if, for whatever reason, I happen to be watching it, she'd probably join me, but yeah, she's not, she's not like, going out of way to watch it. I, I, maybe it's just me. But I feel like they go pretty hard on the fact that it's impossible to sit through. Yeah, I think, well, was it Seth Green or someone was saying that when yeah. they all sat, sat down um, at the, like, at Lucasfilm to watch it and they were like, okay, anyone can bow out whenever you want. And they treated it like some endurance test, like a frat party, like a game or something like that. I was right. like, it's not that bad. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's not that cheesy. bad. It's cheesy as hell and it's weird as anything that has ever been Star Wars. And if you're going like, to get through it, but it is easier to watch it with friends. I absolutely. Like in a group, a group I, setting is like, you can't just sit there and pop it on and watch it yourself. No, that might be It's impossible. the perfect thing to like riff tracks. Like you, you, you talk over it, you chat right. shit, you, you laugh at the bits that are ridiculous. You make fun of it. Hell, if you know the songs, you sing along like that sort of thing. It's, it's exactly that. And if, and if you do sit down by yourself, there is a Rift Tracks commentary that you can download the audio for. And yeah, watch of course there way. is. Uh, that, uh, yeah. that makes sense. Or you could watch it with us and watch along with you, me, and Jay as we watched it. Yeah. Two yeah. of us for the first time. <laughs> yeah, me for the probably like fifth, sixth, I don't know. <laughs> and yet, as Stevie just said, she's never made it through the whole thing. <laughs> no, no. I mean, she probably sat there while I watched the Rift Tracks version and was like reading a book or something. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I know she's I, been in the presence of the whole thing. I I thought it was I thought it was a really good like 
documentary in terms of like how it got made and really just the the calamity or like just the series of things that happened to lead it to get to that point where it's it's that it's not Lucasfilm. They didn't really have much to do with it by the end of it. That finished product was it was a rush job. It was over budget. The people who were editing it, like the 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 guys who were editing it, had, didn't have mm-hmm. any experience doing any of that sort of stuff. So it was just like it was it was more like the people who were bowing out as they went along weren't Seth Green and his buddies watching it. It was it was the people making it, and they they I like yeah. the the chart that they had where it's like at first it was like an equal thing with like cbs and the tv execs and then the lucasfilm people and then one by one those dominoes just fell and it was like yeah you're left with people who don't really know star wars a bit no one knew star wars at that point because it was still so new um but the thing is so like the 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 lucas side of things and the writer side of things not the not the variety show side of things yeah if you look at just the live day stuff, stuff that takes place around the Wookiee household, that mm-hmm. probably is like a, I don't know, like an hour, maybe a 45 minute chunk of it. Long title. story. Yeah. And you get the, the Lucas written cartoon in the middle. Mm-hmm. Like that hour chunk isn't bad. Um, yeah. And I think with the subtitles added to the Wookiee speak, yeah, that it adds fun. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> it adds a lot. So, there might be a really good edit of that somewhere. Um, I think one of the things is they talk about, like, you know, they didn't really have an editor. Uh, Steve Binder, like, left. When he mm. was done shooting, he's like, I'm not touching the edit. I got, yeah, I um, got to go, yeah. So so it, it feels like whoever edited edited, uh, edited it um, didn't know George's idea of faster, more intense. And so... Uh, I mean, I mean, almost certainly not, because George wasn't giving any notes at this point. Um, right. It's it's very apparent and it's always been very apparent if you know the history of Star Wars and things like that that George has always wanted to do Wookiees. He's always wanted to do some Kashyyyk, yeah. Kazook, whatever you wanted to call it, like stuff. Right from the get-go, he says in this in that interview, I really enjoyed that interview that he had uh with Ralph McQuarrie or like that chat that he had with Ralph McQuarrie when he was talking about ideas. <laughs> um and that the was the whole Star Wars. That artwork's amazing. The fact that Ralph McQuarrie did concept art for before. this thing, incredible. Um, itchy with the helmet looks like all of the stuff that looks like Mobius. Uh, yeah, artwork. oh, it's, it's um, very including Mobius. the yeah, uh, uh, just like seeing McQuarrie drawings done in like markers. Yeah, not like not like painted, not like mm-hmm. like illustrated graphics, it, like quick it's, sketches, it's sketches, but they yeah. look amazing. Minus, they look yeah. amazing and i kind of want them to put that stuff in a book let's get a tale let's get a tale of, of a jedi or or visions yeah. where we tell just the story that the original writers visions not the writer guys wanted it. to do, do it in like ralph mcquarrie concept style so that's your yeah. your your tweak on the animation style because that's what visions always does and it's good for that and you you tell story of the faithful wookie or like something like that you just you call it that that's the episode title bang yeah. um or you do it you do it in the no, the Mel, nelvana style mm, of the yeah. of the cartoon like where it's real bizarre proportions but i feel mm. like the story of han and and chewy trying to get back to his family for life is a great story um yeah. i think it's a fun story i thought it was interesting to say that chewy didn't get a medal he didn't want one yep but I his reward always, that, was, that was to, he just wanted line, to go back yeah. home. And so it's like, like, let's, let's, let's make it let's happen. It. Yeah. Let's get a, um, I mean, if you want to, if you're going to market life day at the parks, if you're going to sell life day merch, just like just own it. Like if you're not going to just like put out the holiday special, then create something new that tells this story. Like, mm. you know, do it the way George would want to do it. Bring George yeah. in and say, hey, you want to do that Wookiee story, right? I know yeah, you don't like that, the holiday that, special. I did for 76. Just let's go. Yeah. Because um, yeah. he wanted to do, obviously, the very famously wanted to be, it was going to be um, Wookiees in Return of the Jedi. He finally got around to doing Kashyyyk in Revenge of the Sith. And so he's yeah. he's always been interested. He's always wanted to do more stuff there. And this right. felt like he's like, Okay, I'll probably get to the Wookiees in the third one. 
let's do what would be the equivalent of like a comic book one shot for this story so yeah. it's like this was yeah. never going to be the main story with the wookies and everything like that but it's like yeah. here's some stuff with chewie's family uh scott d it's... says tell the story of the imperial officer raquel welch disrupting life day like 100 percent. she's yeah. still around right yeah she's still yeah. around uh, maybe i don't know <laughs> bring her into um, voice somebody i mean i feel like yeah. it's i feel like like all of this is interesting stuff that 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 sort of outline that mm. ralph mccrory had make that story yeah like as a thing it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be the holiday special if you if you if if there's some sort of deal where lucasfilm uh when lucasfilm was sold to disney lucas said don't ever allow the holiday special to be on any stream or don't release or whatever then do a version of the story it's so it feel like you, you lucas has remade stuff has has yeah. has fiddled with stuff like let's just do it let's tell the life day story it's already canon people are celebrating it at the parks uh the picture in the in the documentary where they showed everyone at uh batu on life day like stevie and i paused and went back to make sure we were see if we we're in that picture we weren't oh but um we've it's it's You've one of those things where it's like, like it's yeah yeah yeah. yeah, I was there was before great. we knew it as a, it was a thing. Yeah. I went to, uh, uh, I was gonna sign it was still in. Still a natural like fan gathering, not not a Pete a organized. Thing. Pete and his family. Pete from Star Wars Minute. I was uh, gonna sign him and his family in, and they're like, "When do you want to do it?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, Life Day's coming up, and it's like a Saturday," and they're like, "Perfect. Perfect. That's not like that. What a what a what a great day to celebrate." And we went, and then we stumbled across a huge gathering of people who also we're there to celebrate life day and Chewbacca swung by like word got out to Disney yeah. higher ups that we were there. They sent over um, a couple of cast members, hourly cast members to sort of do uh, make sure the crowd didn't get out of hand just yep. to kind of oversee things, make sure what we were doing wasn't malicious. Uh, yeah. They had like one security guard and one like regular security suit. Fine, you got a gathering and of people. That's like, absolutely fun. Like, yep. They were both discussing, like, I don't know what this is. They told us, like, we just heard that these people were gathering, and it seems like it's okay. And uh, word got to Chewbacca. <laughs> Chewbacca came over, moving. grabbed Great. one of the one of the orbs that someone had made, and then Chewbacca lifted the orb around all the people lifting their orbs and uh, cut to the following year where Disney is selling their own Life Day orbs um, that glow and all this stuff. Uh, and it's just one of those weird things. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a weird, weird thing. And it's funny. It's funny but hearing it's, them it's the talk about life day because it came up naturally. Yeah. Like that was a, a fan driven thing. Like that's exactly, yeah. it's that same thing that you get when you go to a celebration where it's like all the bullshit, all the negativity, all the horrible internet, my knocks and stuff like that. It all fades away in those moments. That, and that's what's yeah. great about it. It's like, and it can be around something that I guarantee that most of the people there have either not seen it or have seen it and think that it's corny and hokey and everything like that. I don't think there's anyone there that genuinely loves it and they hold it in such high regard. Like, it doesn't matter because it's a fun, natural time to all yeah. come together and celebrate the love. Yeah, it feels it feels like. I mean, listen, as bad or good, like things, things find their place. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, when I first I... saw the, the prequels, when I first saw episode one, I did not care for it. Yeah. Um, it has grown on me there. It's still, it's becoming like nostalgia. Not Pat um, Oswald, apparently he's still not over it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, yeah, that's tough. It, it feels like, cause I'm doing this documentary about lost and it seems like everyone who watched the finale that hated it kind of just stopped and didn't engage with lost conversations anymore. And I think they, they Patton, bowed out. Patton's probably like, oh, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't see him talking a lot about sequels or TV shows and stuff. But he, he bowed out. He knew when he was, I mean, you know, yeah. but here's the thing. So we were watching this year, we were watching uh, Ahsoka mm -hmm. and there was this whole thing where Ahsoka and uh, Sabine were going to be going into a different galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're like, wow. This opens it up to weird, all kinds of weird stuff. And it 
uh, doesn't really if you're a rebels fan it didn't get any crazier than a rebels episode like space whales isn't weird to us no, no. uh but if you want to see weird holiday specials where it's at yeah like, oh yeah it's the weirdest it's the weirdest star wars and i gotta be honest like i kind of dig it I, the more i think about it the more i dig it i need to actually watch it yeah okay so stevie said that Patton did mention andor so maybe he didn't fully bow out uh but i, think he's I mean not a fan. he just a, he knows when yeah. to pick his conversations he knows when to yeah like he's a performer he knows what he's doing like yeah right right um but it's so it, talking I, about performers i think a lot of the performance of the hatred of this thing is is it is that it is a performance george like, you see george harrison mark mark like all three of them in particular like mark is the corny goofball who is the nerd so he can talk about it in the i'm not supposed to talk about this kind of way because that's who he is as a person that's the character that mark hamill is in like the public eye harrison being the stoic grump when conan asks him about it his face that's not a natural reaction. That's him performing. That is him going, oh, I'm going to do a little bit of an act now. No, no, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. And it's brilliant. George, One of the things... I think there was a time when George probably was like, fuck this holiday special. I don't want any part of this. I don't want it to happen. But there's interviews with him at the end of this dark where he's like, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a weird little thing. And I love that like people have taken it and they've claimed it as their own and things like that. Good for them. George doesn't give a shit about this sort of thing like no, i think doesn't. that's why i don't think that there is ever this thing with him saying no we can't release it i think that it's i think that is it's a it's a myth that's been perpetuated but right yeah, i love it um joining us now is the uh is the editor the director one of the producers one of the directors of a disturbance in the forest jeremy coon welcome to the show hey Hey y'all, how you hey, doing? Hey Jeremy, nice to doing see you. Good. We're just we're just talking about George Lucas, Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, uh, discussing the holiday special in a dismissive way, and it feels a little bit like a performance. Um, it, yeah. At this point, it's more of a it's more fun for them to be dismissive of it, but maybe they really aren't. Who's to say? I mean, enough times passed for it's kind of like. You can't really bother yeah. them that much. I mean, I think, I think Lucas at one point was like, "I do not like this. Don't talk about that." And then all the <laughs> actors have kind of fallen. Like people have just fallen in place. And I feel enough time has passed for maybe he doesn't care that much, but people still think that he cares. That's, yeah. I think that's yeah, that's exactly what we were yeah. just sort of saying. That's definitely what it feels like when you watch it and you see those interviews. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> the other thing, he just needs to own up to the fact that it exists. And yeah. it, I mean, the fact that it's still kind of bother certain people is kind of what makes it fun so if that got taken away it would lessen i think our enjoyment of it <laughs> mm. right. do you think that like the scarcity of it is kind of what makes it so interesting and such a fun thing is because it's not so readily yeah. available yeah i mean it's still there's still not that many people i mean i think after this documentary like more people know about it but like i mean 10 years ago just over time has become much more part of part of popular culture whereas before the internet, it was really, I think, kind of under, like I saw it in 2002 on a bootleg DVD. It was the first time I saw it. And it was still kind of like, people knew about it, but they didn't know the specifics of it. Like, I thought it was a prank. I didn't think it was, I thought it was like when those under, someone had like manufactured a, <laughs> like a show and then made it pass it off like it had actually aired. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've since learned that that's not the case. But. <laughs> <laughs> So I have a question that that it, it, it's not addressed in the documentary, but it's maybe something that you try to figure out. Do you know the origins of that tape? It's a specific recording from a specific the area. Was, was the it someone, did that... someone didn't have a VCR at the time, I'm assuming. No, there's multiple feeds of it. Are you talking about like the tape that we used in the movie or the... Just, well, well yeah, I have questions about that. Uh, but but just the actual the one that was distributed the one with fighting the frizzies and i think there's might be a, oh. a, a so there's actually one out I there think, i believe so there's beta so people had vcrs or like at least beta machines back then so it was like 78 i think like 76 it was out but i mean there wasn't not a lot of it was basically only like uber rich people had them but 
my understanding is there's multiple feeds. So like there's like a Chicago side that has it. There's like the Frizzies one, which I think is New York, but it, and then what's funny about it, we don't, we don't talk about it in the doc, but like this the special actually aired like six times in Australia. Oh, wow. I, don't know if it aired, oh, I don't know if it aired. I don't, I don't know if it aired legally, but it aired like between like, <laughs> I think it aired as late as like <clears throat> 85 or 86. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So they're doing it annually. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it aired, it, it was, I found that after the fact and I was like, I don't know how to put this in into the movie because I don't have anyone talking about it. But yeah, I mean, this, it, there's like, but there's a, uh, I think there's like a Swedish version that aired too. So like people, people have recorded stuff and just have found things laying around. But uh, yeah. yeah, so there's there's multiple versions. Hmm. What a it's what, interesting. I now, don't know if there was version... ever a UK showing of it. I've I don't know of any UK airing of it or not. But it wouldn't surprise check. me. I... We had we had plenty of variety shows. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I talk to people in the UK and they they act like variety shows are totally foreign. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's hey, that... something. <laughs> there, there was some. There, I don't think it was as, ever as prevalent. But I mean, even today, on like yeah. like New Year's Eve and stuff, there's always like some sort of variety throwback type show. Um, yeah, they're always pretty bad. I think uh, like, yeah, they're not they're not good. But you look at them in comparison to the ones that you guys were showing in the dark, and it's it was wild. Yeah, America excels at something back then. It was that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we. Uh... I, I I definitely want to bring this up because uh, we've watched documentaries on Disney Plus uh, that use clips from the holiday special, mm -hmm. uh, like 100% use clips from the holiday special without actually showing the whole thing. Uh, your movie has clips from the holiday special and they look way better than any version that I've ever seen. Um, are you using AI and stuff to clean that up? Or are you doing yeah. They're like a pretty decent clean version out there yeah we got a we got a I think it's from a half inch master from the smith hemian from smith hemian's uh collection we we're able to get and then we took that and then i ran it through a, like a ai upriser which was kind of hit and miss depending on what the scene was there's also other times where like there's like the zion cut which i would say is probably the best version of the special if someone was looking out to go buy it uh there's so some scenes look better in different versions oddly yeah. enough it was so we kind of picked and choose I had to pick and choose what looked better but the i'd say 80 percent of it is that that half inch that we got that was uh up res it's about as good as it's going to look i I, yeah. I was actually told that the, the what we have is better than what lucasfilm has in their archive which is shocking <laughs> oh, wow. No, wow. so maybe it, the the stuff that they've sort of used on the disney plus docs and stuff is they've just run it through their i don't know if their I, up res or something I, maybe or yeah, I don't know if I believe that because that we use a clip from the uh, it's behind the scenes of Mandalorian where it's mm, uh, yeah. lumpy looking at like the cartoon. I'm like, that looks like film. I mean, that or that I know it wasn't on film, but like that's pretty sharp. It looks so really not, good. Yeah, I don't know if maybe that's just the scene they had that was better. It was a fragment, but like, yeah, the word is that uh, yeah that someone Lucas film was shocked about the quality of the special that we we were able to get. Hmm. Cool. Huh. Huh. Ralph, I don't remember, I have this... when we. When we watched it, uh, did we have ads on the the copy that we all watched when we covered it? Yeah, on the show? we did a full we did a full two hour running uh, watch along on the internet. Um, uh, YouTube cut out the the yeah. the the Wookie um, animated faithful bit, Wookie. yeah, the faithful Wookie. Uh, they they took that out because apparently they love that and they have that on Disney Plus and it looks yeah. amazing on Disney Plus. Um, but yeah, we watched the full version with the commercials. Uh, it was a it was a point of contention because uh, I had seen I've seen the holiday special several times. Uh, James hadn't seen it at all, and our guest for that week hadn't seen it either. And so I'm like, we're gonna do it. We're gonna sit here on a stream and watch it in its entirety. I can cut out the commercials to to shorten it for us, but the commercials are kind of. The commercials are, are the best things, part. It they puts things into perspective. It really does. Um, all those, the union label uh, commercials. And uh, uh, I still say uh, Tobor is robot backwards. Like that's, a, <laughs> that's a big, you know, I love that. Um, but, but I don't, we were, we were discussing before you came on, like the difficulty of getting through it. I don't really have a problem with it. But it seems like I, I don't know. I don't 
it might just be me, but I don't think the holiday special is as bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's yeah. not good, but I don't think it's as bad. We've we've as watched Lucas worse. and Company like, would would say. Yeah, we watch worse. We, we've watched worse on know. this channel. Like it's so, it's so boring. Like I mean, I've had to watch it seven or eight times. I think I've had to watch it six or seven times through the course of editing because I was like, yeah. I tried to watch it with new eyes and see like what could I pull out of this that we could use. Mm. And every time it was hard to like <laughs> not want to hit fast forward, like to actually sit there and like like watch it, and that's all you're doing. You're not looking at your phone. You're not doing anything else. Like it's, I don't. Know. I mean, more power to. I mean, there's people that definitely are nostalgic for it, and I understand that. But yeah, yeah I'm not one of those people. I, yeah, we're, I can't say I'm rushing to sudden... go and watch it again at any point. But yeah. <laughs> I'm glad right. I have. Right. We were we were saying how the you I, I haven't seen it with the subtitles added to the Wookie speak. Um, and I feel like that made it actually more entertaining. Uh, uh adding yeah. subtitles to the the sheer wook. Uh what is it? How long is it? Is it like 15 minutes, 20 minutes of just no it dialogue? It feels like 15, 20 minutes, but I think it's, yeah. it's like nine minutes, eleven seconds at the beginning. <laughs> all right. I was tempted to go through, it took too long to set it up, but I was tempted to go through and just add up like all of the Wookiee scenes because it's probably closer to 20 or 20, it's probably closer to 20, 25 minutes where there's like no dialogue throughout the whole movie. Right. Wow. Right. It I remember when we were else. watching it. It certainly it certainly felt like yeah, 20 minutes, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, we don't recommend watching it alone. Uh watch it yeah. with a group 100 percent because the, the holiday <laughs> <A> special <support> <laughs> system. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty <Yeah>. much. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh uh and, and spike your eggnog as well. Yeah. That might that might help as well. Um, so the documentary, how did this all come about? Uh, uh when did when did you decide like oh this is something that needs to be explored uh so we started probably it was about four and a half years ago so it's been a while but my co-director steve kozak uh, his dad was like bob hope's agent and manager so he kind of knew this whole variety world uh but he wasn't he, this is his first documentary so i happened to we happened to cross paths and he just kind of happened uh i was i'm always looking for new projects and he mentioned that like you know, he'd love to do some of the holiday special, didn't really know how to go about it. And uh, I was like, well, hey, let's just start shooting some interviews. We came in, uh, it was 2019, shot with like Steve Bender and Lenny Rips. Like we're trying to get people who actually worked on the special because, right. I mean, they're all kind of older. We didn't, I mean, no one knows what, you know, whose who's memory is going to last or anything mm -hmm. like that. So we tried to knock out a lot of those just to get a base. And yeah, I mean, for me, every documentary started with I had lots of questions about the special that no one had really dug into. And so, like, there's plenty of like five or 10 minute documentaries on the internet that just kind of, you know, cursorily went over it. We actually want to talk to people who were on the ground, like what happened. And, like, yeah. uh, my feeling was that the there room. had to be a reason why this got made. It wasn't just like there had to be valid reasons. And we wanted to kind of figure out what those were. Yeah. I I, I think that's really good. It's It was nice because, as you said, yeah, there's lots of interviews. Everyone's got an opinion on the Star Wars holiday special, yeah. but hearing from the people that were actually behind it was a new take that I hadn't seen before. Yeah, it's just fun talking to these people because I mean, a lot of them are just happy to like someone wants to talk to them about something that they did 45 yeah. years ago. Like, there's not a lot of things that have that kind of lasting power. Yeah. I, uh, I'm working on my first documentary um, and was curious watching this. I was watching this through new eyes being like, pretty much on the on the back end of working on my first documentary and i was just curious how many interviews did you do for this documentary it seemed like there was it was uh, a... yeah i'm trying to think i think we probably because most of them are in there i mean i want to say we probably did 45 is my guess okay. somewhere at 45 okay. or 50 and then there's probably five or six that didn't make it in the movie <clears throat> we ended yeah. up using most of them yeah some yeah. some people we sat down with where they're just like they were just happy to talk to us and it turns out they had no memory at all about the holiday special because <laughs> it was just another show to them at the time and they were trying to like create memories to give a good interview and that was yeah. like we're just like this isn't working <laughs> mm. yeah yeah this doesn't match yeah. up with what those guys all said <laughs> what's, yeah, what's your working... you talk about what your, your documentaries on or is it yeah so people? so uh taylor morden approached me a couple years ago to do um a documentary about the show lost oh so you're doing and, okay yeah i'm working on his lost doc uh cool uh, and have been for the last two years and um 
I, I was just curious because I'm sitting here watching the doc and I'm like, okay, cool. It's a lot of people in this, this, but it still has a nice flow to it. And I'm like, I'm like, I hope we don't have too many people. Cause as of right now, I think we still have like 10 people that we still really want to talk to, but we're sitting at like 47 interviews. And then we had like nine shorter interviews at Comic-Con uh, with some fans and stuff. And I'm just like, I'm not editing it. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay, but it's still making me yeah. anxious with the amount of people. Um, and, you know, Taylor's got three cameras set up for, for pretty much every interview. And I'm just like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's all overwhelming to me. And so uh, that's Taylor's problem. Is he editing it? Yeah, it's a lot. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's his problem. <laughs> so. It is. It is. But at the same time, you know, been working on it for so long that I'm like, I want it to be good, but there's, there's so many moving parts. It's crazy. I can't, I'm, I'm looking also forward a six to that season show of... as opposed to a two hour. Yeah, I mean, what, like, I mean, there's well, going to be more people yeah. to pull from. Yeah, I mean, you're also going to have things where you do things where you just lean on. You end up inevitably end up leaning on your favorite interviews. So like Bruce Valanche was an early interview for us that I leaned way heavily on. Yeah. He was, and eventually it's something. He felt like the yeah, star, to, for sure. Yeah, we had to get other people because I'm like, this isn't like the Bruce Valanche show. We got to bring people that can maybe give other commentary that says something similar. Uh, as, soon as, I, that, as soon as I heard about this doc, he was the first person that came to mind. Like, he's one he's of those great. names that's, like, that's on there that you're like, of all the people and then like pat proft as well like i know pat proft from like the, he worked on like the naked gun movies i think um yeah like just the names yeah. that are in the in the credits are crazy rick baker uh uh yeah it's just it's bob it's mackie a, it's i mean a, bob mackie was like as big as it gets at the time. yeah and and it's just wild that you have so many talented well-known people I guess putting their all into this thing that just doesn't look like anybody put their all into it, but it's <laughs> no, not. I mean, it, I mean, no expense was spared on this. It was like a million dollar budget, which is crazy at the time for a TV special. And they hired the best of the best. So it was kind of mm -hmm. like, I think people at some point like went into this thinking like, we're going to, this is going to be amazing. And then, I mean, the other thing like the shoot wasn't like, it was like weeks. I mean, I think the shoot was like six days. Granted there was a, they did the three days and they shut down and they came back, I think for three or four days. So it wasn't like it was right. a ton of days. Right. Is that, was that, do you think there's a, God, cause you, you think there's an editable version. Budget. There's a what? Do I think there's a what? Do you want me to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm just going to say, do you think there's an editable version of the holiday special? One that makes it not a slog to get through. No, it's going to be bad. I mean, the only thing you could do is make it shorter. But like, I mean, for me, this is the hardest. Right. The hardest thing for me is all the Art Carney stuff, like where he's in there and like the, the shop. Like, that's the part where it just feels like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is like not funny. There's nothing happening. There's no Star Wars characters. It's just, yeah, it's. Yeah. What's funny, like Nev Mailer, who's he in felt that like scene. The with wild him, card. Like, yeah. Well, in that scene, because we had Taryn Combs talk about, like, who's that guy in the shop with him? Like, that's got to be, like, the worst actor ever. And I looked it up, and he ended up, like, being the president of SAG, oh, like, wow. in, the 80, <laughs> in like, the 80s or 90s. So he was, like, this was respected actor. <laughs> it's, if, if you can deal with Art Carney, who's just going and getting yeah. trashed every afternoon, then you can deal with any other actors, probably. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, looking right. forward to be drunk, is it makes it more enjoyable. So that's, that was good yeah. context to know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And the Harvey Corbin, I always had trouble with the Harvey Corbin bit where he's showing off. It's like a, it's like a fake commercial where he's showing off like a computer. Computer. Yeah. And he's glitching. Like it's, it's really, it adds nothing to anything. And it, it it's, it's really tough to get through. And so it's like it's if it was not set in the Star Wars universe, it would be a product placement moment, but it's in the Star Wars. Well, it's trying to be sort of Star Wars. So it's like, yeah. What are you trying to sell me? You, I can't buy this thing. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just. Yeah. I mean, my thing is at the end of the day, like it's just boring. I mean, that's the part. Like, I feel yeah. like I was like that John Waters quote, where it's just like the worst thing you can do in a movie is be boring. Like, even someone being offended or throwing up in my movies, at least it's in a reaction. Mm. Like, just yeah. yeah, boring is 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 tough to deal with as a filmmaker. Right, right. I mean, the our our, our I I was born in seventy seven. And I grew up with some of this stuff on TV. And uh, back then, you know, stuff was kind of entertaining. Uh, you know, I remember seeing some of the, like, I think the Smothers Brothers 
was like the the last surviving like variety show that was out there. But they're I mean the Smothers Brothers were great, and as a kid I, I love like the Yo Yo Man and stuff. But like entertainment back then was so different, and I feel like MTV changed a lot of that. And I feel like this was like the opposite of MTV. This was the music videos. There's there's a couple of of, of essentially music videos. Uh, one with uh, Starship. Starship. Yeah. And it's it's it, it's okay. It's okay, but it's not getting to that MTV point. Like it's just not quite there yet. Um, but you could you, you could see the writing on the wall with like the the MTV sort of style of you know what yeah. became known as that like the quick cuts and everything like that that flashy music video thing where <laughs> it was more it, intense yeah that's it faster yeah. more intense like but it wasn't quite there yet and so you end up just with this yeah it just feels like it's dragging on and on even if the song is actually all right like it just feels yeah the song's an earworm. The song yeah. gets stuck in my head. Yeah. I'm sure you editing the 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 doc, you had that song stuck in your head. Yeah, yeah it's not. It's not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a decent song. It's not like yeah. it's. Uh, well, actually, I mean, the music they all composed for it. Like, actually, music's not that bad. I mean, even B. Arthur in the, right, yeah. the cantina scene is like, for what it is, is a good song. I mean, it's not something mm-hmm. I'm gonna jam. <clears throat> it's not something I'm gonna jam out to, but it serves its purpose and was well done. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like you disagree with that. that but <laughs> it's i'm not into like i'm not into like broad broadway type of show tunes and stuff i'm not a i'm not into hmm. like musicals i'm not yeah. really into musicals and stuff it's just not my i like the starship one um the the is it diane carroll yeah. um <clears throat> uh, it's it's it does it feels like it's made by old people yes starring old people and I know oh, now, that, like, that you know, the true. Golden Girls, <laughs> yeah. the Golden Girls now has gone on to, you know, cult status and people love the Golden Girls and B. Arthur's great. And I like B. Arthur in this. Uh, it makes sense for that character to be kind of the, the, the old sage the bartender. In, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In the, yeah. It's the Marva character from Andor. Like, it's yeah. like, we get it. But then like Harvey Corman, it's like, it's like everybody is just so like our carny. I'm like, but it's you, because you I'm, I'm that... assuming that it's because it's coming at like nearer the end of that sort of variety show era. And so the people that are doing those sorts of shows are yeah, get the of that generation, kids. I guess. Get the yeah, Brady but a lot kids. of it was just too, I mean, a lot of it was just too was available. Mm. I mean, like yeah. Cher was supposed to be Diane, Diane Carroll, and we don't know why she dropped out, but she dropped out. They're just like, well, Diane Carroll's the same size as the dress that was designed, just throw her in there. And, yeah, because again, like, these people are on set for like a day. They're like, hey, can you yeah. come shoot for like, I mean, Harvey Corman, I think, was on for like two days at most. So, I mean, it's just kind of like pop in, do it, get paid, get out, and go on to the next thing. Yeah. I love his his chef character, uh, Gormanda. Yeah. Um, see, see people dressed as her for uh, at Celebration, the Star Wars Celebration and stuff. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's such a bizarre design. <laughs> and and i just absolutely adore it because it because i prefer i, I kind of want more weird star wars in my star wars would have, um would have been well, great friends for dex at the diner yeah <laughs> right <laughs> um it looks like we are being joined by the director of the last blockbuster and the upcoming getting lost being produced hey, by hey. Uh, me and him it's taylor morton hey taylor oh hey, hey taylor hey, Jeremy. hey taylor. Hey James, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. Yeah. All good, man. All good. I, I had to ask Jeremy about how many interviews he did for the doc. He said around 45. Perfect. And it, it, yeah. yeah. Someone's scared that you've done too many interviews, and I said, "Don't worry about it. That's the editor's problem." I'm not scared. So, <laughs> but I'm the editor. I know, yeah. but that's what's yeah. your problem. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Taylor, what are your thoughts on the holiday special? Uh, uh, I love it. I've, always, loved it. I've oh. always found it highly entertaining. Um, I remember seeing it, you know, I think my brother had a tape of it or something a million years ago somehow. And uh, just thinking it was rad, just like the, the 
weird Ewok movies and the weird droid cartoons and just like it's just like weird kooky Star Wars in a fun way, not like in a prequel way. Yeah. <laughs> it was always know, one I of those this things. Weird... Uh, that like growing up, the the Ewok cartoons have, they were on or they just about finished when I was sort of getting into Star Wars at a young age. So I was able to find those in video stores and stuff, which was always good. So I'd I'd seen some of those, but the holiday special was always one of those things that I'd always hear about, I'd see pictures of, but it it wasn't until we did it. I think like I'd had opportunities, but I'd never pulled the trigger until we covered it on this show. So it's it was nice having something old that I hadn't got to yet. I I did really enjoy that. How old were you when you saw it? Uh, it, what was it, Raph? Two years ago that we did it, so I'd have been like two years ago. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, 30, yeah. 35. I mean, to me, <laughs> yeah, to me, it depends on when you, what age you were. Because like I saw it as like I was like twenty three, yeah, and I was just like, what is this? But yeah. if you were yeah. like, I mean, if you were like five to ten in like seventy eight, like this was the best thing ever because it's the only time you could have seen Star Wars outside mm. a theater. Like, there's no home video. There's not playing on TV. Mm. Like, this is it. Yeah. Right. I saw it. I saw it first. Like a before the special editions came out okay and so for me at the time i was like it was it was still in that dark time of just like no star wars yeah and yeah. so i was clamoring for anything uh no matter how weird it was and um yeah i think it helped me swallow the the cgi jawa or uh jabba, jabba in 97 yeah. <laughs> like it helped me it's like oh star wars can be bad I'm like as bad as that yeah time. Yeah. Star, at the time, Star Wars, Star Wars could do no wrong. We had three movies. I love the Ewok Adventures. Um, mm -hmm. I was like seven when they came out. Perfect. Like, it was right in my wheelhouse. Um, I guess I would have been like eleven. Yeah, something like that. Still what? love them. Seven Seventeen would have been like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was one of those things where I'm like, oh, there's Star Wars I haven't seen, and I don't have to read a, a EU novel. Thanks. So I'll that's what I was on. doing. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're doing. You're in the EU novels. I can't, I can't read. I just do not like reading. And so sitting through, you know, nine minutes of Wookiee dialogue for me was easier than <laughs> trying to read a chapter just because my reading level is so poor. Um, so so I found entertainment in it. And then the Boba Fett cartoon was was rad and I loved I love that the the Han Solo design a lot. I really love it. So and there's a card game coming out next year, and they've they've sort of shown off the Han Solo card for it. And so many people were just like slagging off the art and saying that it looked terrible and everything. I looked at it and I'm like, this looks like a new version of that Han Solo. So I'm I'm all in. I love it. I think it looks great. Well, what's funny is when we found out that Adam Driver was playing, you know. Han Solo's son. Yeah. Whoa, I thought. I thought he it's, doesn't. He doesn't look like Han Solo, but he looks like the animated version of Han Solo yeah. in the holiday yeah. special. Yeah. Like he looks very similar to that, and I'm like, I kind of dig it. Yeah. I kind of dig it. So the, well, we know that JJ was a fan of this anyway, so you know, I, I'm sure it wasn't a conscious decision, but it's there. Yeah, it's a good Scott theory. Asked, I like it. Yeah. Scott Diaz, asked, uh, uh, "What did you learn the most that shocked you?" Like what? What shocked you? While the, is there anything that sticks out? I have two things. The first thing that was uh, we we're talking to Lenny Rips. Where uh, the first thing I was like, oh, there's something here to get into. Is where he, he reveals that Lucas told him in their, in their first meeting that Han Solo was married to a Wookiee, but like yeah. society wasn't ready to accept that, so we can't do that. <laughs> I remember he said that. They're still not ready. Said that. And, like when we said that, I was like, wait, what are you talking about? And like it was kind of like a can you repeat that? Because I don't think I heard that correctly. <laughs> uh, so that, that's the thing that was, that's probably the funnest shocking thing. The thing that probably shocked me the most over the course of making it is that, uh, so when I started out, I was very kind of like, Lucas is a big baby about this. They should just release it. And all of, like, I was kind of just, you know, kind of dumping on him through the course of making this, I have way more empathy for his position at the time and the decisions that were made and what happened. I mean, the only thing I can fault him is that he should probably own it a little bit more because he did send these people off to go make this, but you know, if you're like 33, made the most successful movie of all time, and you've taken everything you have and leveraged it to pay for the sequel to build like your entire empire on, no pun intended, but like the uh, 
Yeah, I mean, he was taking these huge swings and risks, and like this was like you know seventh on his list of things to deal with. At the end of the day, it was a way to keep 20th Century Fox happy, keep the brand alive, and sell toys that Christmas. And I would say that it probably succeeded at doing those things. Definitely. And there's no so. such thing at the time as like prestige TV. TV was kind of yeah. always just like a whatever. A but, like Star Wars broke so many grounds, not yeah. just in terms of the film, but just the, the marketing and everything. So yeah, this was just keeping that ball rolling. You can see why studios would have thought, yeah, cool. It was a big summer hit and then it will go away. Like people won't remember it. Like, so in th three years time, when your next one comes out, you've got to remind them. So having something in between, you can see where they were coming from with it. Yeah. And it, 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 again, like we get to the end of the day, like why it happened. It would have been weird for them not to do this. Yeah. Like to not take this opportunity yeah. if you're looking at it through 77. And like you're going back to like disposable TV, like no one thought this was going to be. I mean, I think some people thought it was going to be an annuity like Lenny Rips, but like then, I mean, back then you have three channels. It's kind of mm. like you, if you want to watch TV, your options are limited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it, I, I think it was Bruce Lange the... who was saying uh, that, you know, he's, he's not happy with everything that he made, but he's like owns up to a more like, uh, where George has sort of just discredited this one completely, he's wiped it off. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think right now, I think George thinks of it more as a bit. Yeah, oh, I definitely. Think I think I George think thinks of anymore. almost everything is a bit at this point. Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, one of the things talking to like <clears throat> Seth Green, so Seth Green was like the next best thing to interviewing Lucas. He was like number one on my list because he like has talked to Lucas about this, like knows him, has worked with him. And he was telling me, he goes, uh, he's like, Lucas has a really, really good sense of humor. It's extremely dry, but like, he's incredibly funny, which kind of mm -hmm. shocked me because I always feel like he's kind of a stick in the mud. And I kind of feel he just likes, mm -hmm. I feel like he's might be trolling a lot of people with a lot of his comments. If you look at it through that lens, <laughs> yeah. like he told yeah. me the one where like, I heard the story where like Seth uh, Rogan was talk talking to Lucas and Lucas was telling him about, uh, you know, had the spaceship and he was going to like fly away because Earth was going down the toilet. And Seth goes, Seth, Seth Rogan goes like, well, can I have a, can I have a spot on your space shuttle? And he's like, absolutely not. And I thought maybe <laughs> he was being crazy, but if you think about it, like Seth was, uh, Green was like, I think he was just trolling Seth Rogan and just making stuff up, which makes more sense. Yeah. And if you think about that, that's actually, it makes him seem like a much more jovial type person. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. There's yeah. there's I don't something know if that's true, uh, but I think it's similar to Harrison Ford. I think so much of his grump yeah. is just he knows that that's a character that he's playing, so just lean into it. Yeah. There there is something brought up in the doc a couple of times uh that uh a friend of the show uh the George Lucas talk show are obsessed with and that's Star Wars detours. Like I don't know yeah. if a lot of people have heard about Star Wars detours. Yeah. I feel like it's going to be the next holiday special. It's this thing. There's like something it's, like it's 66 done, episodes. I think there's 40, of a, of a, 48 episodes or something like that. I mean, I, I talked to like complete, right? Yeah, they're complete. So, I mean, the, the gist was that so kind of in the this weird period of like Lucasfilm, George is a fan of the robot chicken stuff with Seth. And he's like, well, hey, let's do something. And then like so he bankrolls all these episodes like Weird Al does the music. They finish them all like they're basically done. And then Disney buys Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy was like, this cannot be this irreverent kind of like comical version of Star Wars cannot be a whole generation's introduction to Star Wars. Mm. And it just got shelved mm. and it's been there for, I mean, it wasn't yes. been like 15 years or yeah. something like that. So, something I mean, that's the doc, that's the doc I want to make. I don't know if I can get Lucasfilm over the, the, the hill on that, but I'm hoping with like how we approach yeah. the special, we can approach. Cause I, I feel like the show is probably dated and not that, it's comedy doesn't age well to some degree right. so some of it's going to feel old right. but i think if you present it i mean some of the stuff seth was talking about sounds hilarious where they're just having fun with the characters and Even they should they do something it up and just released a couple of specials of like just the bits yeah. that they're like really happy with still like that would be great yeah i mean i think the only, i mean there's like one episode that's been really like someone leaked out right or it's a partial episode like there's like I, like no one i think they anything. showed three at a celebration once like yeah oh, did they okay i think something like that yeah yeah, I've only mm. seen maybe like five minutes of something. That's all mm. I could find. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a weird one. Um, it's 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 sort of semi done. Well, I mean, it is done, but yeah, it's it's. I do think that they probably intended to release it 
but they wanted to, as you said, they wanted to reintroduce Star Wars um, with The Force Awakens and then everything since. And then because of the the up and down reactions to everything that Disney have done since, they've just been like, eh, we can't do it yet. We can't do it. We can't do it. And now yeah, I think at this point, it's kind of like, well, what, what do we have to lose? That would be my answer. But that's right. it. Like, yeah, you've, you've had such a drought of other things, like at times that, you know, they should have. I mean, I think my main beef with like, Lucasfilm, the Star Wars product, or even Indiana Jones, like they, I don't, maybe I've just gotten old and jaded, but they used to feel fun and they're kind of like lighthearted. And now they've become like very dramatic and serious. And it's so like precious. Bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Treat it so I'm precious. Like, and I'm like, yeah, it's supposed to be robots exploding and we laugh. Like it's supposed to be <laughs> sword fights. Like I, it's, I've it's never dumb. understood I love, why I love it needs it to be so. Silly. Yeah. I love yeah. Andor though. I think Andor yeah. is good, Andor's but you need another flavor. You need something to counter that. And they do it with like the Lego series, like the Lego stuff, mm -hmm. I guess gets a free pass um, because that's a built in sort of it's got a separate is, brand is... attached to it as well, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, just, I just, why not? I mean, yeah. unless George didn't want this to be released, just release it. Who cares? Mm. I mean, he paid for I... it. I mean, I assume he had to pay. I mean, they had to pay 15, 20, 15. I mean, they had to pay a lot of money to get those created at that stage that they're at. Even if they're not finished, that's yeah. a lot of money that's just not being, yeah. you know, there's no return on it. Mm. Uh, right. Jeremy, I wanted to ask you, you said that you started work on this in 2019 and you had a few interviews then. Did you guys just pretty much shut down over COVID and everything and then come back to it? Or were you working on stuff behind the scenes? I mean, it was all definitely the, on the shelf. Audience. Yeah. yeah, we shot some like our base and basically people we were concerned might pass away. We got all those yeah. knocked out, I think, before COVID, or at least a lot of them. And then the ones we wanted to get uh, COVID, we were probably shut down for at least six months. We're like, no one wanted to interview. And like some of our of interviews are outside because of that. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's half times trying to goes, you, you just pay, yeah. you pay, you pay as stuff that comes along. And as people want to do interviews, you do it and try to make it happen. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I did not, ex I had not edited anything in like 50, uh, I've been like 15 years since I'd edited a oh, film. Wow. So I did, I did not want to edit this cause I'm just like, it's too hard. I have too many mm. interviews. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you hear that, Taylor? Yeah, point, <laughs> yeah. I mean, at some point I just was like, all right, I can't afford an editor. That's going to be, you know, thick can see the film so i'm just going to start editing it myself and kind of knock the rust off and that's so i mean that that's part of it if we had more money we probably could have gotten this done yeah. faster but once we got into like south by southwest that really kind of like accelerated all the things we wanted yeah the holder maneuver podcast asks, how did you end up choosing the narrative spine uh, that you edited the doc around so i just start with the interviews you used to pull selects and you start to figure out what people's were interested in. I mean, to, to me, I mean, talking with Steve, like I knew that the entry point, cause I wasn't familiar with it was we need to kind of explain what the late seventies variety TV world was like, which was also right. gold to me. Cause it's kind of, it was kind of fun to like, cause we need to show the, cause you show these like star Wars clips for like, uh, Richard Pryor and Donnie Marie and all these other star Wars yeah. appearances. And they're really jarring. They're like, Oh, well, why is this happening with the characters? I know. And then you lead into like this. What else was airing at the time? You have like Paul Lynn Halloween special, Brady Bunch Variety Hour, like all these shows that are, you know, arguably worse than what we just saw. And so uh, the other thing I want to get into is we really wanted to talk about Charlie Lippincott. And I wasn't familiar with the details of like how big of a role he played in Star Wars initial success. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like the first part of the movie was before we get into the special, was just setting the stage of like how marketing worked and how that does and setting the stage for it. Uh, and then once we got into the special, it was kind of like, what are the scenes that we want to get into? So that that's that was kind of the, the so basically the sto short stories that came from all these interviews, pulling it down and just trying to figure out where to put puzzle pieces. Because the doc editing is really hard. And you, get, you can't go into like a preconceived notion because it's not like you have a script to follow. So you just kind of like, kind of let the footage guide you to what the story assembly, is. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this whole time I've been working with Taylor on this doc, like I, I really, I, I'm not, I, I've I've done minor editing, nothing like 
this and it's just like with each interview i'm like how is this going to shake out how is this going to shake out and for us we hit a we recently hit a, a um an interview that i think really will help us shape the doc a little bit better we hit a couple of interviews yeah. um that 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 really helped us and it's it uh, i i i'm glad it's not the ball's not in my court as far as yeah. editing uh, sure uh, just i mean Taylor, have you how many documentaries have you done? Uh, this is my fifth feature doc, and I edited four of them. So, you know, I know I know what you're talking about, man. It's yeah. It's yeah. Uh, what are is the it the is it is it the toughest part of the process? Like, is it the? I mean, it's the whole process, really. Yeah, I guess so. Because is it funding the hardest part? I feel like money is always the hardest part of documentary filmmaking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is. We've been very lucky on this one that just crowdfunding got us. And also, we're we're cheap. You know, we work off of yeah. out of the trunk of a car, and it's not a very expensive car. So <laughs> we're fine. I like my car. Hey, I buddy. really, really like my car. It is old. But, um, but you know what I mean? We're not spending you know, 10 grand yeah. for an interview shoot. Yeah. We're spending a few hundred dollars or, or whatever it takes. Um, and funding mostly has to go to legal and all the annoying things that suck. Clearance. But yeah, clearance is music and, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, editing is so much where documentaries take shape, right? Because you could have the same pile of footage that you had for this doc and make 50 different movies yeah. of 50 varying, you know, different stories, different qualities, you know, mm. you hope that you land on the best one or at least the one that you wanted to tell the story of. But, you know, like you could go back to your hard drives right now and make a whole nother movie about the holiday special that doesn't touch on any of the same topics because you've got the footage. Making me sick even thinking about doing that. I thought about it from my old docs. Like, what am I doing with these terabytes of footage? That's, you know, because you say you did 45 interviews, right? I assume they're half hour to an hour and a half generally. Yeah. Right? Okay. So you have at least 45 hours of footage and yeah. you used two hours worth. So mm. there's 43 hours of. No, yeah. Sorry. That's, that's just me, like, the interviews. That's not even the rest of it. And that's just the interviews. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, like the archival is the most fun of like documentary filmmaking because you're just going on this treasure hunt, trying to find little. Because I feel like there's a lot of stuff that like people are aware of what's out there, the clips we use and stuff like that, but like no one's pulled it all together for everyone to kind of watch together. I think that's what makes it fun. Did you have anything that was like never before seen by anyone that you really lucked out and you're like, I found this one clip that no one's ever seen? Uh, I know there's something that like I don't I don't want to say that no one's ever seen anything because I feel at some point it's been out there. It's just like there's a lot of stuff that I had never seen. Uh, yeah, I mean the Comic Con footage that, was... that from '76. Mm. Yeah, I've seen just, pictures. I mean, all... I've seen pictures of that before. I hadn't seen yeah. footage, so for me that, yeah, was, that was new. I mean that was just on YouTube that the, <laughs> the, the World Con had like posted. I mean to me the thing we did a little bit of cheating where. Uh, Charlie Lippincott had done like had re had a transcript of a recording with like the Lucas film. It was Lucas, uh, yeah, Alan Dean Foster and Lippincott, where like the genesis of the holiday special was first talked about mm -hmm. the concept like two years before the it was like a year before the film, like Star Wars had even come out. And talking to so he had passed away. I was talking to his widow, and I was like, I know you have this audio tape somewhere because he did a transcript of it, and I just couldn't get anywhere with there. And I was like, well, it's just. I'm going to use AI and see how good it works. And it turns out it was pretty. So, I mean, we call out that it's like a reenactment, but like it yeah. sounds like Lucas. Sounded great. So we, well, we needed some way to like present this in a film because I can't just have like text with nothing. Right. Uh, so, I mean, to me, right. that was the biggest skit where it's kind of fun hearing him talk about doing like it was very important for him in his words to have a, have a, some storyline that revolved around a Wookiee family, like a mom, a dad, and a grandpa, and a baby. And that's. It's something like uh, that's something I just got from like digging in on on research. He's just like laying out the bones of what the special could have been or was going to be. That's pretty. Yeah, crazy. it's just it's a storyline that he was knocking around for at least two years. 
Yeah. Yeah. He, <laughs> we, we said it early on uh, when we first started this episode, like he's definitely had this fascination with Wookiees and things like right from like right from the jump before even the first film and then just never really got around to doing it the way he wanted to do it yeah maybe he wishes he was married to a wookiee maybe that's it (laughs) maybe maybe we've all seen the the the, or him talk about the imagery of him driving around with his dog in the passenger seat yeah yeah Yeah. um just a man who loves his dog who can fault that maybe lucas is a furry I don't know. <laughs> the old dog loves a furry, bro. <laughs> but but <Hey>. you know, <laughs> all dog lovers go and make movies where. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Number four on the call sheet is a giant dog. <laughs> it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I have much more to say other than I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, me too. I you were a, saying had a blast. Jeremy, you were saying about how uh, you you were hoping that it would all come together and everything. Um, and yeah, I, I, for me, it definitely did. I thought it was really good. It 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 moved really nicely, and I I enjoyed everything about it. I was saying to Ralph, at one hundred percent. My my uh, girlfriend, we'll we're going to be so interested we're, we're in watching the holiday special at any point. But she was really enjoying the documentary as well. Yeah, this this is oddly enough to be the best reviewed movie I've ever made. I think we're going to be certified. Oh. We just said our 40th reviews so will be certified fresh at 100% later today, oh. I think. Oh. And uh, yeah, I feel like every film where like there's before South by where we got in where I'm like editing it, there was like a month before South by. I'm like, am I just wasting my time? Like, this feels ridiculous. That Like, is anyone going to care? <laughs> like, And then like I showed it to some friends and they were like, this is, this is hilarious. We like this. I'm like, oh, okay. But I feel like every film you have this moment of like crisis where you're like, I'm just wasting money and time and no one's going to care about this. <laughs> That's well, the creative is, I, in I've general, been, I think. That's anything. Yeah. yeah. The the last movie I'm working on with Taylor, we've been discussing it for two years, over two years now. We've been shooting for just over a year now. Um, and it's one of those things where I keep thinking all this time uh, after, I don't know, an hour and a half, hour, two hours or whatever it is, people are just going to be like, okay. That's it. Is that yeah. is that how it goes? Like it's so weird spending so much time, like uh, 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 phone calls and emails and 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 trying to just get a hold of people and finally locking them down and then having them cancel and then redo like all of this stuff going into it and going through one of the multiple edit possible edits and just sitting people down for like you know less than a couple hours and them just being like, all right. It's so weird to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeremy, who was yeah. your toughest get? Oddly enough, we didn't have any. Everyone was like very supportive and yes, we reached out to. I mean, a lot of it was just kind of like Kevin Smith and people like that. It wasn't that he didn't want to do it. was just. It's the scheduling. Yeah. But like his interview. I mean, his the- interview I did. I had to lock the film. Like I had three days to lock the movie for South by. And so I did his interview remotely. And like, I remember they sent like. We did the interview and the first thing he said to me i was like oh thank you for doing the interview and he's like oh man i would have been pissed off if you had not asked me to be in this movie if i'd seen this and i wasn't asked to be in this i'd be you know i'd be giving you a call uh mm-hmm. yeah but like that one they gave me the interview like they, they sent me the the low res version right after the interview i edited with that got the high road got the drive shipped to me like two days a day, the next day cut wow. that in and then output it and that's what went to south by Absolutely. so that that's I guess that's the joys of being the director and the editors that kind of condense that window down <clears throat> to get right. it out. I'm terrified of that. I'm terrified of us getting to like, oh, this movie's done. And then we land one of the interviews we've been trying to get or something. And it's, you got to open the edit back up. Like, yeah. yeah. No, no time to spare. If you get a big enough <laughs> interview, like Pat, well, like uh, actually the hardest interview was Pat Oswald because we finally locked him down. I was going to get him before South by the same week I was doing Kevin. I landed in LA to like, it was, it was like the biggest rainstorm ever. And like, they shut streets <laughs> down and like, he, he like where he lived, like the canyon had gotten shut down. So like he couldn't get, like he had no power, couldn't get out of his house. And I was just like, well, I like, I don't know what to do. So we ended up like salvaging with some like other, other interviews we were able to pick up, but like we, we, we had to go back and unlock the film to go get him in. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh. It's all it's all making me very anxious, and I don't. Have I can to, see the stress building in Ralph. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's yeah. no, it's great. It's great. But it's it's because we're kind of we're at a point where we're pretty much we have a 
movie. And yeah. we yeah, there's movies. there's definitely yeah, there's <laughs> definitely a group of people that since day one is like trying to get them, and we keep just inching closer and closer because uh, I found out and I was listening to the Holdo Maneuver uh podcast uh with um, Adam F. Goldberg and uh Kyle Common. Neiman. Yeah. So go yeah. check that out. Um, and they were saying the same thing as that we've been going through. It's like once you kind of get an interview, once you do an interview with someone, a lot of times they'll be like, oh, have you talked to so-and-so? And then put you in touch with like next next person. And it kind of snowballs. And, you know, it, we're kind of building up to the sort of bigger, but kind of more uh, right. Well, and as you get more interviews with like and, people who have notoriety, it kind of makes it safer for people who are more famous to, to yeah. be like oh i should be a part of this project because so and so right yeah yeah. Right. yeah i mean like like we oddly enough we got so gilbert godfrey we got because he had done a podcast on the holiday special that we liked but like he was also mm -hmm. like a gettable name that we had where it's like oh gilbert godfrey's doing this i mean it's not like he's the first thing you think of a star wars is gilbert godfrey but it like it kind of right. helped her like legitimize us a little bit yeah and then yeah. that led to like other interviews and uh yeah it's just all part of the hustle to make it happen it's uh yeah. i'm always amazed mm -hmm. when you ask people to do interviews for documentary for free and like how many people do say yes because i'm not sure i would be as open to it because there's yeah. like really not a lot of upside for them mm -hmm. yeah right i did it once yeah. somebody asked me and i set up my own cameras and shot my own interview and i was like man this is a lot of work and <laughs> No one's ever gonna watch this. What's the point? So I feel for the interviewees. I get it. It's not yeah. necessarily all fun and games. And there's nothing. Taylor keeps fun. threatening. Taylor keeps threatening me. Yep. <laughs> Putting me in the movie. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really want to. I'm not. Well, I'm now I I just learned glue. we'll just have AI do your voice, so we're good. Yeah. Oh, there's great. plenty of source material. <laughs> Man, it's cr it's crazy how good it is. Like, it's crazy how, like, like I found the guy on Fiverr and I paid him like 50 bucks. And I'm like, here's the transcript. Can you just see what you can do? And like a day later, I had what's in the movie. That's, that's awesome. Like, that's great. Mm. And like great. the Darth Vader. That's cool the Darth, too. The, the, well, the Darth Vader voice in our trailer is a Fiverr thing too. Like I paid Amazing. a guy. That, that's just a commercial for Fiverr, but like I use yeah. Fiverr a lot for things. <laughs> the, the, the opening, our opening logo for the show. Um, I got on Fiverr. I used a little bit and I added yeah. hyperspace stuff to it. But it's, it's. I mean, there's people out there who are willing to help for, you know, we have we have folks coming up to us, um, reaching out to us online. They're like massive loss fans and yeah. also have skill sets and stuff we don't and just want to like volunteer their time to help out because they're, they want to make, they want to see something cool. And we're like, absolutely absolutely yeah. and it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of bonkers how you know if you do something uh uh if you do a documentary based around a specific fandom yeah. uh, you're gonna find a lot of talented people within that fandom that are willing to like give you some top tier stuff um and it's just it, it's kind of it's kind of fun like it, it's 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 an experience for sure and I think yeah, that's yeah. one of the those connective tissues. Like Star Wars, obviously inspired so many people, so it's it's gonna yeah. keep those people going on forever. And Lost is the same way. Like it's so many people may have grown up watching Lost who are now working in or at least adjacent to an industry that you guys can take advantage of, and they want to help out. So it's great. Yeah. There you go. We hope they love it. <laughs> that's another <laughs> thing that gets me. Is yeah. you know. You know, we, every time we announce, it was fine. Every time we announce someone like <laughs> amazing, they're like, "Oh, but what about so and so?" I'm like, "Hey, man, we're trying. <laughs> we really are. You know, you we, we want everybody to be satisfied." But you guys see that? like light at the end of the tunnel, or are you still kind of like in the middle of production, or like? Oh yeah, I mean, oh, we're yeah. like we're 47 interviews in. We we're yeah. done unless but you want to do 90. So you want to have enough. <laughs> we're done unless some bigger fish you know fall into yeah. the boat is is the only thing um we do have a trip to hawaii coming up to shoot mostly b-roll because it was all shot in hawaii and yeah. who doesn't want to spend part of the winter in hawaii filming n beaches for a documentary like yeah that's <laughs> hard guys I, 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 I don't know how you're gonna manage 
You know, I looked online and there's just no stock footage of Hawaii beaches. I would have to no, go you shoot. Know. Stuff. Yeah. Have to go. It's a shame. Yeah, it's it's all wild. It's all like yeah. We've been talking about this trip to Hawaii since day one, and it, it feels like it's almost going to be like a celebratory trip. Um, uh, but but yeah, you know, you don't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like when we were at like. 20 interviews or 25 interviews taylor told me it's like we have enough for a movie mm -hmm. like we have enough for a movie everything else is just gravy and so like it's just been like yeah you know you, you get somebody and like oh this is this is you can't get better than that and then someone else comes along and you're like okay i can't get better than that yeah so we're we're in that mode where we're just kind of like i think we're excited. gonna get think... Lucas to talk about lost <laughs> Good yeah. luck. That'd be or Mark Hamill. You can, it, and you can trap him and ask him a holiday special question and see what he does. For sure. And then you can open up the edit and put it in. I would actually open the edit. I also this nightmare <laughs> that we were, if we got an interview with George Lucas, that it would be like a horrible interview or just be like yes and no's and kind of grumpy. And I'm like, I don't I, I feel I like I have to do something like, like this. That. You just have to cut George out. <laughs> well, I said that joke. People were like, what, like uh, why isn't George in your movie? I was like, he didn't make, he didn't make it. He's on the cutting room floor. Cut. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I mean, obviously, because I mean, that's another thing is people's like, oh, we're doing a show about or a, a documentary about loss, and people are like, oh, you guys should get Matthew Fox. And it's like, well, you know what? <laughs> oh, really? That's a good idea. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> I haven't thought about right? that one yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming you reached out to George, and George was like, probably graciously declined. But uh, to be honest, it, we did know, like a. We, we did like a cursory reach out, but we didn't really like follow up. It was just kind of like, uh, we know he's not going to do this. Right. So it was it's just a like, polite offering, isn't it? More than anything. Like, well, yeah. I think it also ties into the, I feel like every friend group has like a friend you kind of make fun of. And like, <laughs> say you got like a nickname form that they hate. If they embrace that nickname and start using it, it kind of ruins the fun of that joke. Yeah. And I kind of felt like maybe right. having them too in on the joke kind of make, ruins the fun a little. Like it, it I find enjoyment that it's just kind of irksome to Lucasfilm. Not a huge deal, but just yeah. enough to kind of like they prefer that it would that like they prefer that we didn't do this mm -hmm. is what kind of makes it fun. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard anything from them post like the movie coming out? Yeah. So uh, a number of I mean, he's been I guess I can say it's because he's posted publicly, but like I mean, the, some of the writers at Lucasfilm have like loved the movie and think it's like the best thing. Like it's uh, the words that we got back were on the writing staff. Or the writers group whatever that is uh was basically like this is the most perfect like this is the perfect documentary you'd want on the holiday special which you couldn't get a better compliment than that that's wow. really nice. i don't i don't think the higher ups feel that same way uh up to <laughs> kathleen kennedy but at least there's a number there's a contingent of people at lucasfilm that are very supportive it's a it's a curiosity for sure and i yeah. love that we have more information about it um, yeah. because it doesn't it doesn't like ruin the experience of the holiday special there's still so much mystery there that it leaves you like it's like yeah it's i just i'm clamoring for more information but i don't want all the answers to it because i still wanted yeah. to have this weird bizarre charm uh well we talked we talked we talked to lucasfilm early on like three years ago and it got all the way up to the top and we're like People were supportive. We got to the top, and then the person—I I assume it's Kathleen Kennedy—but the, the the answer we got back was that it's too soon to tell the story for Lucasfilm to be involved. After forty-five 40 years, <laughs> after forty-five years, <laughs> they told it's too every soon other to tell story. story. <laughs> hmm. wow. Yeah, so I've always found that funny. Where I'm just like, I interpret that as like, as long as George is alive, this is like a off-limits topic. Yeah, That's I'm 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 totally reading that into it, but I'm like what's going to change 10 years from now that's yeah. not the case now <laughs> yeah i'm right there with you that's the first thing i thought was yeah. like like is there a statute of limitations and is it just george's know. life yeah like, yeah it's like after everyone's after died and was associated with it we can talk about it it's like <laughs> wow yeah well i think we've talked about the holiday special plenty uh Jeremy, thank you so much, A, for joining us, but also yeah. Yeah. For uh, making, making this. Yeah, yeah. because um, uh, any sort of um, any sort of thing that puts the holiday special into the light uh, is, is good with me. Um, yeah. And Taylor? It's, and it's, oh, yeah, and it's out there for everyone wants to buy it. It's on, like, Disturbance in the Forces, our website, but it's on, like, every 
digital platform and Blu-ray if you want to check it out. Yeah. It was a it was a blind oh, buy perfect. for both Ralph and I. As soon as we saw yeah. that it was available, we we both bought it and decided yeah. that it was going to be our next episode. So I got yeah. it on awesome. iTunes uh, yeah. and I, I purchased it. I didn't rent it because so, I'm like, you know what? Chances are I'm going to want to watch this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It's a good price right now. It's a it's a really good price. So mm -hmm. you know, I think it was like like five bucks more, or six bucks more than renting. Yeah, I was like, yeah, of course. Um, Taylor, thanks you for in. showing up. <laughs> yeah i'm dude i'm you know what i'll probably watch this every every november 17th because i i listen when you i'd, I, I'd watch I, this I over the watch on the holiday special again yeah it's more entertaining there's, than watching the holiday special for sure <laughs> yeah there's uh, i mean it, it's a companion piece for sure <laughs> yeah. it's, um because when you cut to the you cut to the shot of um galaxy's edge and the group of life day fans with chewbacca like my wife said, can you go back to see if we're in that picture? Because I go, I, I missed it this year, but pretty much every year I go to galaxy's edge for life day one. It was just because yeah. I felt like it, it wasn't like a whole thing, but other people had thought the same thing and it made a thing out of it. Um, and it's, it's, I, you know, if they're not going to put the holiday special up and they are going to promote life day and sell merch at the parks, for life day and stuff online for life day like well i mean they have to do they have to do something this. i mean like, that's nuts there that's, it is it's great yeah out here. like yeah like awesome. if you're not going to post if you're not going to post the holiday special make some new content that's a good version of the wookie life day story like just mm -hmm. make something anything because because i think it should be celebrated and and you know in some way or another like sure, Lucas doesn't want the holiday special out, but it doesn't mean that you can't make other holiday special stories, related so, stuff. Yeah, might they could come up in one of their fifty TV shows. Right? <laughs> yeah. It seems it to it's in the Mandalorian. It's in the yeah. pilot of the Mandalorian. Yeah, right, right. It's, yeah, it's nuts. Like, <laughs> like that's like a secret handshake in the episode fan service, I guess you can call it, but yeah. it's mostly an inside thing, like a really inside thing. And it's like, yeah. let's expand on that. You expand on everything. Yeah. You well, know, you have if, people if who were the right age when it came, you know, people who are the right age are now making say, content. You got your fab rows, your Filonis yeah. and yeah, everyone. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank uh, you guys so much for joining us. It's This has been a pleasure. Yes. Uh, it's been really good. No, oh, thanks for having us. And Appreciate it. Yeah, and if you two can stick around after our outro, um, I'll just do some proper goodbyes. And I want to <laughs> thank everybody for joining us live. Everything, everybody for watching later. Again, um, go, go, go! Check out the movie; it's great. Um, and then, uh, you know, be very supportive of indie documentary filmmaking. Yes. Um, every single one uh, made yes. by a person on this panel. <laughs> we see getting lost too. <laughs> um but no thank you everybody for joining us thanks for uh thanks jeremy thanks taylor and uh, i think that's all i have to say about that yeah uh, next week we're gonna do a, a data link, a data yeah, we'll link episode next, next week. week um about like the end of the, the, end year. Of the year just a, a year wrap up uh and ralph can have an extra week to decide what our next main episode is going to be right cool um Excellent. until next week everybody uh jeremy taylor thanks for joining us uh don't give in to hate See you. Celebrate the love. Punch it.